one of the most popular and one of the oldest construction material is uh, brick and it is not only popular uh, due to its uh, cheapness or due to its dur uh, durability the main reason for being its popularity is its easily availability normally bricks are rectangular in shape as you can see here and though the shape can be customized as you wish and bricks are produced from clay because clay consists of kaolinite which is the uh, largest source of SiO2 or silicon dioxide and the silicon dioxide is the main component of brick which we will learn later and now the question is why bricks are from clay why the bricks are produced from clay the answer is simple because the clay is easily available and that's why it is economical in everywhere in uh, on the earth the clay is available so what are the other option for producing brick yes you can uh, produce brick from a mixture of sand and cement and also you can uh, produce brick by using flyers nowadays actually flyers is not a waste you can use it in producing cement you can produce uh, bricks from these flyers so flyers uh, has a very good use usefulness in nowadays now what is the size of a brick normally the length of a brick is twice of its width and its height and width are same and for a standard brick also known as a modular brick the dimension without mortar is 19 cm by 9 cm and 9 cm when you add mortar with it that means you construct uh, you complete construction after applying mortar the dimensions become 20 cm and uh, 10 cm is the width height is also 10 cm now in this picture it is the dimension given without mortar so the length is 190 mm and the width is 90 mm height is also 90 mm now in this top you can see uh, an indentation what is this indentation actually this is known as frog why it is provided to simply uh, provide the bonding between two bricks via mortar we provide this uh, frog okay or the indentation so that the actually it is act as a CR key normally in foundation we provide CR key to resist the column to slide away from the foundation the same way we use this indentation fill the mortar and that mortar attached with the next brick so in this way the frog maintain the continuity between the bricks okay so now we will go for classification of bricks as a uh, as as a structural engineer i think the main point should be strength and durability for classifying everything and brick is not actually exceptional so what is strength and what is durability strength point is that the brick should be able to bear the load for which you are providing this brick and durability means uh, the brick should not actually uh, wear away or torn away or weathering effect cannot uh, disturb your structure so that characteristic is defined by durability so based on these two points strength and durability the bricks are classified into mainly three class or fourth class first and second class are more or less same only the difference is the compressive strength third class is actually when not no bricks are classified under these two class then that can be considered as third class and fourth class is actually overburned and distorted bricks next in next slides we will discuss all of them elaborately so first is the first class brick actually first class uh, brick looks like this uniform in shape a reddish color a very good structure uh, texture uniform texture and the strength crushing strength that can be measured as 10 mpa and this is the minimum value if this is not satisfied that means if the crushing strength is not 10 mpa or more then it is not at all first class brick okay next point is there should not be any crack if there is crack so obviously during application of load it can split so it doesn't qualify for first class brick 
as said earlier the texture should be uniform it is ensured that the brick has burned uniformly okay there should not be any lump of lime what is lime lime is a component of brick and if there is excess lime or there is a lump of lime so in future this lime hydrated and the brick actually split away why because when the lime hydrated it's try to swell and obviously it apply a tensile strength in within the brick and the brick split away next point is water absorption should not be more than 15% what it does mean water absorption actually happen in bricks due to its capillary action so if there is more cavity more capillary actually more interconnected pores obviously the water absorption will be more and if pores is more obviously its strength will be less so that's why to ensure solidity to ensure solidity or to ensure that there is less pores within the bricks we ensure that water absorption is less than 15% now if you are a site engineer and you have to check that a stack whether it is a first class brick stack or something else so how you will check it inside simply keep two bricks in your uh, hands in two hands and stack them against each other you will get a metallic ringing sound okay like two steel objects are stuck together so if you get this type of clear metallic ringing sound then you should be quite sure that obviously the uh, brick stack is first class brick okay so second one is second class brick the main difference from first class brick is small cracks are present within the bricks and water absorption is 20% in case of first class brick it was 15% so obviously here the pores is more and as i said earlier pores is more mean your crushing strength should be less and here is the proof in case of first class brick it was 10 mpa but here it is only 7 mpa okay and in case of texture it is almost uniform so for first class and second class these are almost same okay and second class brick is mainly used for all type of hidden masonry work whether it is in your partition wall whether it is your external wall, uh, wall or internal wall or in case of suppose footing base of footing you can use second class brick and if all these criteria are not satisfied for a particular brick in that case it is classified under third class brick and as you can see the water absorption is maximum so for first class brick it was 15% only for second class it was 20% but in third class the it is 25% so it indicates actually lots of thing water absorption in brick indicate a lots of thing its strength its durability for everything okay so this is third class brick and normally it's look like this for any temporary a temporary structure we can use third class brick the last one is fourth class brick when you are actually burning the clay what happen sometimes some bricks are over burned sometimes some bricks are under burned so in case of over burned bricks they are distorted okay and they cannot be classified as first class second class or third class so these are classified under fourth class brick so all the over burned okay and distorted bricks are fourth class brick actually these bricks are not used as a brick as they are distorted so obviously suppose you you wish to produce some rectangular brick and if it is distorted so it doesn't satisfy your criteria in that case you cannot say that it is a rectangular brick so you simply crash it okay and as it is over burned its strength became also high so you crashed it and used it as a metal metal or sometimes it is jhama also known as jhama okay in indian continent it is known as jhama so you can use it as metal work under road after uh, 
sub base you can use it as a gsb or granular sub base okay 